Amen. Bona sifiwe. Long time. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes I appear like a visitor. <laughs> but Nico, Bona sifiwe. It's always a joy to stand before you and speak God's word. I appreciate Pastor for giving me an opportunity. Kama vile nasema maramingi. It's not automatic that your spouse acknowledges grace in you. And so, Pastor, I don't take that for granted. I truly appreciate. And I always take this responsibility. Hii uh, ni jukumu ambalo na chukua na njia ya kuogopa na yeshimu sana kwa sababu every time you speak, you are speaking to the spirits of men. And just like the Bible says that in the mouth comes out words of life or words of death. And therefore, it's something that I take with a lot of reverence, with a lot of waiting upon the Lord, with a lot of asking the Lord what is in his heart and his mind concerning his people. And I believe that today the Lord will speak to us. And this morning I feel like Jeremiah 23:29. the Bible says, Jeremiah 23:29 says Is not my word like a fire says the Lord and like a hammer that breaks the rock the rock in places and you know the word of God comes to us in different in different ways sometimes it's very sweet sometimes it breaks like a hammer. And so it requires us in a tugarimu sisi, uh, sisi ambao tunapokea neno labwana, tuwe na mioyo tayari, because something that breaks the rock, it is something that hits with a lot of force. And therefore, I feel the word of God in my heart like that this morning. But I've prayed for your hearts that you will receive the breaking of the Lord with a lot of humility and that we will receive the word of God with an intention to abhor the instructions that he is giving us. And so, Nashukuru Mungu, Hebrews chapter uh, 4 verse 12, allow me to make a few statements before I continue to speak on that subject of relationship. The Bible says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of heart. Na kwa hivo, neno la mungu, Biblia inasema, kwa kiswahili ya kwamba, neno la mungu lina uhai, tena lina nguvu, lina ukali kuliko upanga. Unajua kama vile Biblia inatoambia, neno la Mungu linaweka mioyo yetu wazi kwake mbele ya Mungu. The word of God is what shows how uh, spiritually we are, how healthy we are spiritually. Kwa hivyo wakati wa wote neno la Mungu linakuja even when it comes to break like a hammer, it comes to expose our hearts as men. Na kama vile uki, ukiwa mgonjo unaenda kwa daktari na anakupatia prescription, and when you take that prescription and you are whole, na chukua hayo madawa vile umeagizwa, na unapona, that is how the word of God is to us. Ukiruhusu neno la mungu lifanye kazi dani yako, it makes you whole. Why? Kwa sababu tumeona neno la mungu linanguvu. Neno la mungu, it is living lina uhai. Kwa hivyo kile kinafanya neno la mungu, li, lilete uhai katika maisha yetu ni vile unalipokea. And so I pray this morning, Mungu atatusaidia. Atatusaidia kabisa because 
as, as I'm going to uh, speak a few words on what I've been thinking uh, when the pastor has been ministering, I feel like the word of God has been hitting in our lives in, in a very hard way. Ukitazama kutoka wakati ambapo tulianza mwaka huu na mchungaji akawa na anatuelezea ama akatupatia ujumbe ya kwamba this is our year of expansion. If you go back to mambo ambayo amekuwa akituzungumzia go back from January we are now in April. He began by speaking to us about foundations. Jinsi umejenga maisha yako. Unajua ni katika mawazo na moyo wa Mungu kufanya maisha yetu yafanikiwe katika kila njia. Kwa hivyo it does not just happen. So alianza ku, kwa kuongea maneno ya msingi na kabla niendelee kutoka mahali aliachia Swali yangu ni kwamba have you been checking about your foundations and he said that for you to build your life God's way you have to check your foundation for you to hold the capacity of what God wants to do because Mungu wetu are you limited the bible says every word that proceeds from the mouth of God does not return to him void. And therefore, any word that we see in our lives that's not working in our lives is not about God, it's about us. And so I take you back so that we can connect from there. So, akawa naongea kuhusu misingi. How have you built your life? How have you been building your life? Have you been building the Lord's way? Have you been a Christian that has been bearing fruit according to the word that we have received in this house? Very heavy statements have come from our father's mouth, of course, acknowledging that as the voice of God. So akawa anaongea kuhusu misingi, akawa anaongea kuhusu urithi, the birthright. And he encouraged us not to trade our birthright for anything, not to trade the gift of God that we have received for anything. He encouraged us to guard that treasure that God has given us, and I come to remind us, has that been the case? And you see, when I think about that, he said that a statement that was quite heavy, and he said, if we don't guard our firstborn position, God will raise the second son. And I feel in my spirit, this is a season that we are in as a church. God is raising the second born son. I don't want to, ra to, to dwell there. So the foundations, the issue of the birthright, we cannot train the treasures, the gift of God for anything. Please follow me, I'm taking you somewhere. And now he connected this with relationships. And he has made statements like, if there is a relationship that does not point you to Christ, you've got to deal with it. Now, a relationship does not take a day or two to build it. And therefore, when his servant comes and say, because we take that as the voice of God, that if that relationship, no matter how many years you have built it, does not point you to Christ, does not serve God's purpose, then you destroy it. It takes a man that is obedient to God. It takes a man that loves God. It takes a man who fears God to do that. And so what am I trying to say? We have been going through a journey as a church. The issue of foundation, the issue of birthright, the issue of relationships that 
we are redefining our relationships one more time. And so, as I wait upon the Lord, I can only make this one conclusion about the journey that God has been taking us. Give us Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. And so this journey that we've been coming through as a family, I feel like God has been cleansing us. The Bible says that, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. So the Lord has been cleansing us as a church through his word. The Lord has been washing us through his word. The demand of God for us as a family is that no matter how hard it is to destroy foundations. One of the days he gave an example, na, na kasema, if for example you have, you have built, some time back you built a bed sitter, and today you want to do a, a, a gorofa, you cannot build on the same foundation. And so it takes a man of humility to demolish so that they can build again. It is not easy to demolish a relationship that you have built for years and years. But it is possible when God says you do it. So as a family, the Lord has been taking us through that cleansing. The destroying of foundations, us guarding our birthright, and now redefining our relationships. God has been cleansing us as a family. The issue of the second born, raising the, 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 the second son, when the first born fails. I think the church is right there. And so God is calling us to respond to his word. And now, why the cleansing and why the washing so that we can go back to the issue of relationships? The same scripture in, in message translation. So why is God placing such a high demand on us? It is not in vain. I want to encourage us and I want to read this scripture so that those that are still not dealt with foundations, they deal with them. Those that are still not sorted the issue of their birthright, they go back to it. And those that are still holding on to relationships that do not pass, uh, uh, serve the purpose of God, they can be quick to do it. So the Bible says the same scripture, uh, scripture in message translation, Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. So why has God been using his words on us like a hammer? It is not to destroy us. There is a certain beauty that the Lord wants to develop in our lives. Two things. The Lord, through this cleansing and washing, the destroying of foundations and redefining our relationships, there is a certain beauty that the Lord wants to release upon us. And the Lord wants to make this church whole. I think that's a prophetic word. The Lord wants to make us 
to make us whole. Two times this year, the Lord has spoken to us through his servant. He said two things. One thing he said, that the Lord will release a harvest to us this year. And this church will become a movement. So what is bringing the harvest is the beauty that God is creating in us. Because when we destroy wicked foundations, when we guard our birth rights, when we redefine our relationships, there is a certain fragrance that we release as a family. And this fragrance is what attracts the harvest. How now? Someone will look at your life. He will look at how you operate. He will look at your relationships. And because of the knowledge of the word that you have received, he will realize something different with her and you attract them. So this beauty is to attract the harvest that the man of God has been speaking about. This beauty also is coming to make us whole, is what will make us a movement. You see, a movement is something that is, is not uh, ordinary. No, people are used to going to church and, you know, it's normal. But there's a difference between a family that loves and fears God, a family that operates, being guided, being led, being governed by the principles of the word of God. And there's a difference between a family that operates in drinking oil and laying on of hands. I'm not saying it's bad. It's bad to drink oil. It's not bad to lay hands on them. But there's a difference between such a family. There is a difference between a family that is grounded and rooted in the word of God. So as I begin to minister on relationship, Nataka to Elewe Hivi, as a family, God has been speaking to us such heavy issues. Very heavy. Personally, sometimes when I sit, I'm not able even to speak about anything. And many times I will speak to pastor the things that I am hearing him. I am hearing God through him in the service. So there is, has been such a heavy download. Sometimes it's so hard to let go of those relationships that you have built for years. But my brothers and sisters, because of the healing that God wants to bring to us personally, and corporately, and because of the beauty that will attract the harvest, we've got to obey the word of God. And so I release grace to us to destroy every foundation in the name of Jesus. Any relationship that is still pending, that is standing between you and your healing and your beauty, I release that grace to say no in the name of Jesus. Those relationships that are still taking us back. I release grace to stand with your yes and to stand with your no. There are some of us that are still trapped in many things. Let me not go ahead of myself. But I just wanted to make that statement. Haya mamba mungu amekua kitu zungumzia. The cleansing that we are going through, it is not in vain. It's going to attract a beauty that will bring the harvest, and it's going to give us a beauty that will make us the movement that God has been talking about. Last Sunday, this is where we stopped. We continued from there. And so if you are writing your notes, I want to engage you this is where we, we, we stopped. Are we there? Do you have your notebook with you? So the, the, the last thing we, we wrote were the qualities of how you connect with someone, right? There are different few qualities that the pastor gave us. You have them. So let's read all of them together. Number one, for you to connect with someone, there must be what? Trust. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, 
Yes, I say that for the sake who are, who, for the sake of those who are not there. And now we connect from there. And Pastor dwelt in the second service, Aka dwelt son and Amambo ya trust. So today we pick it up from there. Now I want to read a scripture. That will draw us, will draw our attention to a matter that I think is important when we are building brother to brother relationship. And so we go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. And the Bible says, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Give us another translation. The same verse. Now, when he had, after, he, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David. And he loved him as himself. What does message say? By the time David had finished reporting to Saul, Jonathan was deeply impressed with David. An immediate bond was forged between them. He became totally committed to David. From that point on, he would be David's number one advocate and friend. Now, the relationship between David and Jonathan is one that attracts me so much. And I want us to look at a few things there between David and Jonathan. What is bringing this heart-to-heart -heart connection, the bond, the one in the spirit? What is this? I want us to look at that so that we can learn from it. Now give me my, my that thing about David and Jonathan so that I can take them through. Please, my time is really run. Yes. To those ambao wanaona wakombali sana, I can read it for you. But for those who are writing, there is a table like this. It has David and Jonathan. You draw a table. Yeah, you can see. So we want to see what is this that brought the, the knitting of hearts. The oneness in the spirit. So David, in real life, was a shepherd. Jonathan was a prince. David was a, had a harp and a sling shot. Jonathan had his own armor. David grew up in the little town of Bethlehem and was trained to turn the sheep, as you can see on the screen. But Jonathan grew up in the palace and was trained in the art of war. David was the youngest in his family. Jonathan was the oldest. And therefore, he was in line to inherit the throne. David was from the tribe of Judah. Jonathan was from the tribe of Benjamin. And one that I didn't include there, David was hardly 20 years. And Jonathan was almost 50 years. Now, when we look at this, a shepherd, a prince, mtu wako na ile slingshot kama wale walikuwa wanaenda maandamo. See that thing they were throwing like this. Sasa ako na hiyo na Jonathan is ako na whole armor. Huyu amezaliwa huku, huyu ame huyu yani angalia hiyo difference. Uyu ni ametoka kwa mfalme. Uyu ni wakuangalia mbuzi. 
Uyu ni wa from the tribe of Judah. Uyu So physically speaking hawa watu hawakuwa wapatane in real life there is no difference but i want you to see something here what is connecting these people what is knitting them together what is making them one in the spirit uyu ako 20 uyu mwingine ako 50 I mean now how look at my spiritual father and me how can our hearts be knit together there has to be something divine something special something unique for those two people to be joined together now the script, scripture we have just read first Samuel 18 verse 1 When their hearts are being connected together it is just after David has killed Goliath and so Saul wants to know Baba ya Jonathan anataka kujua who is this that is able to do such a great thing and so I want to say Humanly speaking you would think Jonathan is connecting to David because of the victory but no why Jonathan was a warrior Hata kama aku ameua Goliath he was a warrior and you see a warrior is one that is is a trained soldier ni mtu ako na experience ya vita and i show you one instance give us Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 14 verse 1 I'm I'm driving you somewhere so real life hakuna mahali wanafaa wapatane in our language you would say huyu ametoka kwa family ya 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 wamejiweza wako na pesa wako sawa huyu ametoka kwa familia ya 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 watu duni so hakuna comparison in our human thinking hapa penye wanapatana you would think ni kwa sababu eh hey, huyu hata kama ametoka kwa familia ya ya watu ambao ni duni eh, because of the victory i think let me get connected that's not the case Jonathan was a warrior and he had won many battles for the lord and so yes killing the killing Goliath was something but you are soldier mwenye amekuwa vita na akiona ushindi not so much like someone who is a mere man the bible says now it happened one day that Jonathan the son of Saul said to the young man who bore his armor come let us go over to the Philistines garrison that is on the other side but he did not tell his father verse 2 and Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gibeah and a pomegranate tree which is in Migro the people who were with him were about 600 men ahija the son of ahitu ikabod's brother the son of phinehas the son of eli the lord's priest in shilo was wearing an ephod but the people did not know that jonathan had gone between the passes by which jonathan sought to go over to the philistines garrison There was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side and the name of one was Bozes and the name of the other Sine. The front one faced northward opposite Mikmash and the other southward opposite Gibeah. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, "Come, let us go over only the two of them. Look at that. Come." I want to show you the victory that David has won is not what is causing him to come and knit his heart together with Jonathan. To Jonathan is not really a big deal. He has met with these uh, Philistines and he has beaten them properly. So that to him is not really a thing. 
He's used to this victory. So come let us go over to the garrison of this uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. For nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. I want you to see something there. When David was killing Goliath, he said, You come to me with a sword and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. And here Jonathan says, It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by man, many or by few. I want you to see something here. There is this scripture that pastor has been speaking and speaking. Psalms 119 verse 63. Let us jump there, Kidogo, and we come back to 1 Samuel chapter 14. And he has been saying, I'm a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. So Jonathan is one who knows the Lord, is one who knows that his victory belongs to the Lord, that whatever he accomplishes, the victory that he accomplish, uh, accomplishes is of the Lord. And same thing to David. So they have nothing in common in terms of possessions, but they have something in common in relation to this verse. They are connecting because of what? The fear of the Lord. God is connecting them. And what does that tell you? You may be mourning a relationship that has not been working well with you because you met this person and your life changed. You used to be a prayer person. You no longer change. You used to... Let me not go ahead of myself. I'm going crazy. Now... <laughs> So one thing that we see connecting them is the fear of the Lord. And I don't want to dwell there because pastor has really hammered on that. We go back to uh, 14 now, 1 Samuel. Mali to mefika your verse. So anawambia, hakuna kitu kitazuia mungu kutopatia ushini. Kwa hivyo, hawa watu wa wili, relationship yao na mungu, iko sawa. Na niseme hivi, Brother to brother relationship cannot work if I'm a God person and you are a world person. And I will show you that. It will not work. And so, so he says, do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. Then Jonathan said, very well, let us cross over to these men and we will show ourselves to them. Verse 9, if they say that to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand in our place and not go up to them. But if they say thus, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this will be a sign to us. Verse 11, so both of them showed themselves, there are only two of them, to the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes. Where have they hidden? Verse 12. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, and we will show you something. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord, he repeats, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. Verse 13, and Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him and they fell before Jonathan and he came after him his armor bearer killed them that first slaughter with the two of them that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men now we go back I'm trying to show you the victory of uh, uh, David killing Goliath is not what is attracting Jonathan because you see only two of them in that instance. And many instances that I don't have time to read for you. And show you that Jonathan was a warrior. And he was used to this victory. So it is not the victory that is pulling Jonathan's hearts to David. So then what it is? The first one we have seen is what? Is their relationship with God. Both of them had, a, had established a relationship with God. And friends, for us to connect as brothers, there is no other way. The basis is 
I trust God, you trust God. The baby, the basis is, I love God, you also love God. Because chances are, if we connect, I love God, you don't love God, or you love God, and I don't love God, that relationship will not work. Because for me, it's God. For you, it's God and another thing. So for us to have a brother-to-brother -brother relationship that will be strong, that will be healthy, our relationship with God must be intact. So what else? If Jonathan was a warrior, they both love God. What else is attracting Jonathan to David? Why are they, their hearts getting knit together? The Bible says that David was a man after all God's heart. What will cause your heart to get connected to the right people, even in such an environment, is the heart. The heart issue. We've got to check our hearts. I say the word of God is like a heart. Sometimes it hits hard. But every time it hits hard, especially in this season, I've told you there are two emphasis to bring a beauty. The Lord wants you to have a fragrance that will affect or attract the harvest. And a fragrance that will cause you to be a movement. So, wawili Kila mtu alimpenda mungu wake personally. Number two, moyo. Now I want, to speak to, I want to speak that about our hearts. There are different kind of hearts, what I want to talk about. When we meet in a gathering like this, you cannot just connect. Pastor has told us many times, is it that he's trying to release hatred that you hate anyone? No. Understand the demand of the Spirit. Understand what is God instructing you? Sunday akatuambia maneno ya kutrust mtu. It's not that he's bringing devotion. The kind of labor that pastor does so that ujione pale he cannot again come and use words to scatter. There is something that God is saying to you and me. So the issue of the heart. Number one, in church, we have people with unsaved hearts. Right there. Number one. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, I want you to get me very clear. We are talking about brother-to-brother -brother relationship, and we, we are sensitive about it because of what God has promised us. We will guard it with all we can because we know there is what God is doing in our midst. Now, there are two kinds of unsaved hearts. One, there are people who will come to church because they love church. And I encourage you, continue coming to church. In this environment of the word, your deliverance draweth near. First kind of people. First kind of unsaved heart. Number two. There are unsaved people. The reasons that why we are sensitizing you on relationships. There are people, unsaved people, the good kind that come. They love church. They love come. They, they love to come to church. 
Finally, they give their lives to Jesus because their motive is pure and they desire. It's only that they don't know how. But a day comes and their deliverance comes. Now, why should we be very keen on relationship? They are the second kind of unsaved people. They come in a church like this with a mission. They come with a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit. A spirit of witchcraft. A spirit to bring strife. A spirit to spread envy. A spirit to spread jealousy. A spirit to make people insecure. A spirit to destroy people's gifts. And so you cannot be insensitive to such kind of a people. So David and Jonathan connect because they are people after God and number two, their hearts. So there are people that come into a church like this with familiar spirits, with a mission, with an intention. And this is the voice of the Lord this morning. You better change or the Lord will come for you. <laughs> he can come in such an environment where we are trusting the Lord, where all we want is to guard the birthright. You've got to change, my friend. And so what happens if you connect to someone with a witchcraft spirit? You begin to see Noayako Kwisha. Watoto wako uwelewi. Wewe uko tu, unakujanga church. Things are not working. But check your connection. The Spirit is speaking to us. Who have you connected with? And said they come with the mission to destroy, to release strife. You, you find in a church like this, there is a season where the word is so heavy, but no one is, they bring dullness of the mind and hardness of heart. No matter how heavy the download of the word is, it cannot penetrate. Why? Because we connect ourselves with people with familiar spirit, with people with the witchcraft spirit. And you know that witchcraft spirit destroys. It will destroy your spiritual life. The word will come, but it will not penetrate. You will be in church from January to December. Things will change. In fact, not for the better, but for the worse. So our heart's connection. God wants us to have an established brother-to-brother -brother connection. And this is what happens. If we connect, we fear God as brothers. And we are sensitive with our hearts. And we begin to pray like we pray on Friday here. These people will not prevail in their mission. So I want you to be on this side of being sensitive. On Friday, we guard. Brotherhood guards fellowship. Brotherhood guards what the Father is building. Brotherhood guards what the Father is laying their, their life for. Pastor lays his life for us. So we've got to be sensitive as brothers and discern hearts, unsaved hearts. People that come to a church like this with a mission. Be sensitive to such hearts. Number two, double-minded heart. James chapter 1 verse 8. Double-minded. I say that the word of God is like a hammer. You see, one of the way my spirit is wired in ministry is I speak a lot of encouragement. Uh, there's a time that God gave me a word when I was in prayers. 
where Job says, I remember the days I was eyes to the blind, I was ears to those that are deaf. And so many times I find myself wired up that way. And so when God directs me in such a word of instructions and, and, and correction, sometimes my spirit is a bit, you know, it's not easy to speak correction. And, but you see, we are here to fulfill God's will. I may love to encourage you, but this is the emphasis of the Spirit this season. So you, we cannot connect to double-minded people. So you are in this church and this doctrine. But you are here, you are there. Two Sundays you are here to unasema mtungaji ana preach vizuri. The other two Sundays uko kwa mafuta, uko sijui wapi, uko we brotherhood cannot grow that way. Brethren, it cannot. Kwa sababu uko unaenda ndio sisi tunajua tumeshafundishwa to fight kukunywa mafuta. So we can't connect. So if we want to strengthen our brotherhood We've got to be people of doctrine. Is it doctrine you love? Stay here. Ninena unapenda? Ka hapa. Ninena lina kuhudumia? Run with it. Even when things are not working. Run with it. We've got to build and guard our brotherhood. Hatuwezi changanya doctrine. Some of the things that we see the world do. Unajua, each issue a relationship is complex. And unless, you see the way we say that father-son is a revelation, the issue, the way pastor has been, been defining the issue of relationship, unless you get it by revelation. Who tailewa? Utailewa. If you if you uki understand na mawazo yako, you see like the issue of the way he, he was teaching us here women and the way you cannot just expose your life. I've been there. I've been in an industry where you share everything and anything. When you are not uh, agreeing with your husband, you are there saying sijui ke 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 ke. No, how do you go to someone at the end of Saada? At the end of oh, you have an issue with the hub, one, one, two, one, two. But that's why I'm here, Villa Neno, Lina, Kwambia, Ufania, and Kwambia. Your husband is just insecure. <laughs> He's just insecure. He's pet. I've been there. So you've got to redefine. Unambi waje, issue zako. Don't take it to someone who will, who will just mess you up. People are wicked in our days. I'll come share with you, you my issue with you right now. Natukiatana Ivi, after five minutes, you're already screenshotting your other friend. Honor, honor, honor. Nikwambia kwa kwa depression, tumuombe. Fake brothers. That's not how you pray for people. I come and share and share and share your issues. Labda hata ni mepiga sim. You are already recording me to send to your other friend. Oh my God. We can't build brotherhood like that. Imagine this is how heartless we've become. Unatumia mtu audio mwingine ya kilia alikuwa nakusho shida yake juwa anakutrust. And you are there forwarding it. Atisikia vile anali. Aki yako down and you know, they are emphasized with you, mkiwa na ye, e aki pole, aki yote. This is too much for you, you are too young. <laughs> how, how do you even handle all this? We can't build brotherhood like that. Double-minded. Look at your life, the way you love the Lord. Kami uwa na wambia, sijajua maisha ingine, Nilikuwa nina trainiwa, I was a Catholic, my father was after me like I don't know. He wanted me to be a sister. 
Na mahali ninge anza kusema vile mtu anasemanga sasa ni maisha nimemaliza form 4. God arrested my life and I gave my life to Jesus. And so when I connect with you, mi hakuna kitu ingine najua. I was telling the teens up there and by the way if you have a teen, we are raising a generation up there. Release them to me. The grace of God will change their lives. I love their dedication. I love their hunger. I love their consistency. There are boys and girls up there, always there, 9.45 on time. Release them. We are, we are building generational. So what am I trying to say? So, akuna mi kitu ingine najua. I connect with someone double-minded. Ako hapa, ako, look at your life. The way you loved the Lord. The way ulijua, niwe maisha ni Bible study na kuomba. Hakuna kitu ingine and so you connect with someone, ile bade nana, so unasem, oh, I'm even of a spiritual. It's not you the issue. It's the one you are connected. Wo uko sawa, unafa kuendelea. You are not of us. You see, in our days, many people are doing many things. The other day someone was asking, is it bad kuenda mugithi? Ni vibaya. Ni okay, are you going, kuna mali Christ atakuwa exalted in that mugithi? Personally, I've never been in Mogidi. I don't know what goes on there. <laughs> but me, Nili Muliza, Huko Yesu ana ubiriwa. <laughs> ana tukuzo. Simu niambie. <laughs> me, Nili Muliza, Ivo. Mogidi watu wana simu. <laughs> Susa mnaona vile niko nyuma. That's how I love the Lord. Mnaona <laughs> vile niko nyuma. That's how much I'm innocent. <laughs> Kamuliza mogithi yesu anasifiwa na tukuzwa. Oh, look at your life. Oh, ulipenda mungu uko church kila saa. Oh, unapata mtu. Ako tu sawa na life yake tu anaendele. Ayuko sawa. Time will tell you. Ayuko sawa. So our brotherhood, we connect to double-minded people. Ako kwa ulimwengu, ako hapa. Ikifika ni sherehe kuna kiroro kuna nini <laughs> kuna hii kuna hii eh hey, yuko anasema akunywi now let me tell you something what am i trying to give you an example wao unasema umeokoka uko huku hii mambo inatendeka ati itakuchafua itakuchafua itakuchakufua because when i see you there what am i thinking about you na nakuona anga umeketi kanisani kusikia neno what will I think about you? What message are you preaching? Living a double-minded life. We can't connect. When mimi ni kuhuku, ni najua ni manene ya Bible study, na maombi, sijui kuna leaders, sijui kuna nini, kuna mtu tunafaa kushow masi, amefiwa, that's the life I know. And you are here, uh, unasema mi, I honor my me time. Ah, me time tena. Iko. Lakini kweli iko siku ya Bible study na siku ya maombi ndiyo me time. Hizi siku zingine mtu hezi fanya me time. And you see some of these things. Sia tini mbaya. Me time siyo mbaya. But some of these things are coming to corrupt our mind with time. You begin to realize your zeal for the Lord is slowly drawing down. Because you have started sitting in a company that say, in time yangu ya ku love myself is okay because the bible says love you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself but how are you doing it is it affecting your spiritual life double minded people so unsaved double minded the other one i have only 4 minutes Discourage hearts. Our brotherhood is affected when we don't discern the hearts of people. I've told you there are them that come to a family like this with a mission to bring strife, to bring division, to bring all these things. And unless you discern them, 
that will be a brotherhood killer. Number two, undivided heart. If it's doctrine, stick to it. To Kikutana, we speak the same language. This is what pastor is preaching. You know what he's preaching. This is how I'm getting it. This is apo tutaweza kuenda pamoja. But you are here one Sunday, three Sundays you are not there. The fourth one you are here. Iyo in a letter disconnection. So your life, your heart with doctrine has to be stable. The third one, discouraged heart. There are many issues going on in life. As I finish. And you know, the will of the enemy is that you remain down 24-7. You know, the Bible says that what we, we go through is common to man. See, endure, it despise the pains, the sorrows, the lacks, the defeats, the failures that we are, we are feeling every day. See, at in a punguza, na see, at the Biblia ikisema ivo, it's not trying to show that that God does not care you are going through th these things. But there is a problem when you allow that problem to bring you down 24-7. Paka inakufanya hukuji kanisa. Inafanya ule mmeconnect na yeye. Sometimes, ata anafail hukuja kanisa ili hukuja akuangalie. And pastor said on the journey, Akasema, if our connection is here, it is not right that one day, the place that we met, again, apotena atupatani. A discouraged heart. God cares for you. God is concerned about that issue. One time he told the children of Israel, I know how deep your wounds are. So God cares about you. God cares about that sickness that has been a problem to you. But it's not the will of God for you to be discouraged 24-7. Why? The word of God will not find its place in your heart. This word is meant to deliver you from that trouble. This word is meant to come and bring comfort in that situation. This word is meant to come and give you hope. And so if your heart is discouraged and you accept it and you don't want anything else, you might not get help. And so if you connect with such a person, this is what happens. Emotionally, akuna kitu utafanya. Pia we utakuanga down kama yeye. My time is up. I used to have such a friend when I was working. Down every time. Nasiku anaelewa. Discouragement is a spirit. Why do I say that? Tunafanya kazi na yeye ni accountant. Mimi ni kochini hata ni yame ni kutafutia kazi. And she is down. She has more money, she has a job, but she's discouraged. And this is the lie of the enemy. Anakuambianga, unajua, ukizoela sole yako kukua discouraged all the time. Hata ile siku kitu itatendeka, baraka itakuja, you will still continue to remain down. Kwa sababu jaelewa, si hiyo kazi inakupeanga raha. Si huwe umume anakupeanga fulfillment. Si hiyo kitu ya kwenda ngambo, hiyo roho utaenda na ayo ngambo. Si kutoenda ngambo kunafanya ukue discourage. Discouragement is a spirit. I want you to understand that. Ndiyo utoke mahali huko. Because when you are like that, and another person is not sensitive, is not strong, will be sucked by your discouragement. Usha pata uko rafiki, akiwa down uko down. So, you can't connect to such a ataku suck. Every time you'll be thinking about them. You try, you try kumuinua, 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 hainuki. 
So for us to strengthen our brotherhood, neno iko. Iluhusu neno ikuinue. The Bible says, when all that happened to David, manyumba imetomo, wake wame chukuliu, all that, he found him strength in the Lord. And in our journey, I will let you see the way Jonathan helped David, as I finish, find strength in the Lord. For us to have a strong brotherhood, have people who can help you find your strength in the Lord. Let's stand up.